prayed for every family that grieves. Wrap your loving arms around them. May they know your presence. May they know your peace. May they know that hope that one day they'll meet Cynthia again. And pray for them for the tomorrow, Lord, at the funeral. May there be a sense of your presence at the funeral tomorrow. Just like there was at the endless. Lord, may your name be glorified in whatever said. Father, we pray for those that the list of names. Thank you for those that have got home from hospital. Those that, Lord, are doing well. We pray for others that are still going through whatever they're going through. Lord, will you be with them just now? May they know the touch of the Master's hand. Oh, Lord, but you bless this name, Lord. As we gather around your word, Lord. Lord, we pray that you'll open your word to us. Anoint Pastor John and anoint us to receive. May we leave blessed, instructed how to live for Jesus in this crazy world. Hear our prayers, Lord. Remember the people of Israel, Gaza, and Ukraine and Russia. Remember them too. Remember there's families, Lord, even in Northern Ireland who have lost loved ones, Lord, through trouble. We pray for them too. Hear our prayers tonight because we ask it all in Jesus' lovely name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Good to see you, everyone. And you're welcome again. It's so good to just be able to come together again this evening and rest in the presence of the Lord. Just rest and, you know, just be at ease in His presence. And that's what we sense this evening. The Lord is here. And we can just be confident in that and rest in that. Anxious for nothing, as the Bible says, because we're going to look into His Word. We're going to read His Word. If you've got your Bible, I'd love you to turn to Psalm 90 and verse 9. Just to, I think there's something here that we need to take on board at the minute. Something we need to take for ourselves at the minute. There's something that's led down here that we need to take on board. So we're going to read from Psalm 90 and verse number 9. And what we're going to read here, we've got to take to ourselves, if we're wise, and you'll see how this actually emphasizes this, about if we're wise, we will take this seriously, what the Word of God actually lays down here. So this is a word to the wise. Have you ever heard that saying, by the way? A word to the wise. Put your hand up if you've heard that saying. My mom used to say it all the time. And it used to get on my goat all the time. She used to say to me, a wee word to the wise. She said to me one day, a wee word to the wise. If you ever talk to me about that again, I'll break your neck. <laughs> I was thinking about it the day. This is a word to the wise, okay? So if we're wise, we'll take this in and take it. On board. I want to try and bring to your attention for a few minutes the Bible idea, and it's more than an idea, the Bible instruction about us numbering our days. About us right now numbering our days. Listen to what we read here. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh, or the authorized King James Version says, like a tale that is told. For the days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. Anyone relate to that, by the way? I just think that's really honest there. Their boast is deeper and sorrow. For it's soon cut off and we fly away. Then verse 11. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. But verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of Wisdom. That's God's word tonight, brothers and sisters. And may he bless it to each and every one of you and us together as we have gathered in his name. 
It's just what we have ended there in verse number 12 that I want to try and highlight this evening. So teach us to number our days that we might gain a heart of wisdom. That's what the Bible instruct, it instructs us. The man who wrote this was Moses, by the way. Moses wrote Psalm 19. He says, teach us to number our days that we might gain a heart of wisdom. I just love how this says, if we take this seriously, you'll gain. That's the message this has for us. If you take this on board, if you take this seriously, we were listening to a clergyman today who went on record and saying, don't listen to the Bible anymore. We actually listened to this clergyman. Collar on his neck, just made a, a broadcast, instructing people, do away with it, throw out your Bible, don't read it, don't listen to it. What we're saying tonight is this. Bible is powerful. Bible is His Word. Bible's got instruction for us. In fact, if ever we needed the Bible, it's today. But this says if we take what is laid down here seriously, you're going to gain. And it says that you'll gain a heart of wisdom. It says, teach us to number our days. If we are wise, we will number our days. That's something that we need to take on board. That's something we need to take seriously. If we're wise, we will actually number our days. Now, I want to ask just two things in relation to this. Number one, why should we number our days? And number two, how can we number our days? So why should we do this? Why should we care what we do every day? Some people don't, many people don't. They do what they want, they do what they feel, they live as they like, but why should we care what we do from day to day? Why should we worry about how we spend our days, our time and our talents, what we give our days to, who we give our days to even. Why does it matter? Why should we care? Why should we worry about that? Our time and our talents, who are you giving them to? Does it matter? Why should it matter? Well, tonight it does matter. And I'll tell you why, because in the first place, the Bible says we should number our days. And because God in His Word has said that, we need to take that seriously as Christians. Because it's laid down, we can't overlook it. We've got to take it to ourselves. The Bible says we should do that. So teach us, it says, to number our days that we may gain that heart of wisdom. The Bible says it's wise to do that. Wise people will do that. The Bible says we need to number our days in this life. And because God has said that in His Word, then we need to act on it. And we need to take it seriously. But there's another reason why we should do this as well. And it's really simply this. Because our days are limited. Our days are limited. There's no doubt about that. You don't even need me to tell you that. You know that, but maybe we need reminded of it. Our days are limited. The truth is tonight, we don't know how many days we've got left. And because of that, we need to number our days. But how? How can we really do that? How can we number our days? The Bible says we should do it. We, we know what we're limited. We know this life, as it says in Psalm 90, is a brief moment. We, we spend our years as a tale that is told, Moses said. It's a breath, it's a vapor. 
And in fact, in this psalm, it also says, what is your life? It's a vapor that appears for a little time and then passes away. But how can we number our days? I think we can do that by valuing our days. Va really valuing our days. Numbering something like what's written in Psalm 90 says, teach us to number our days. Now, but if you think of numbering something, the image it comes to me, I don't know how, what, what comes to you, but when I think of numbering something, I, I can see someone counting their possessions, or counting their valuables, or their money. They value them. They cherish them. They're numbering them. They, they know exactly what they are. They are precious to that person and there's a need for us to be like that brothers and sisters listen I there's a need for us if we're wise there's a need for you and I to be like that, like that with every day the Lord gives us because who knows if it'll be our last or not that's a fact of life. You know that, and I know that too. You know, Psalm 118, we sing this more than we read it. But it's still the Word of God. Psalm 118 and verse 24 says, you, you know this, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We say a good amen. That, that's what's read down there. We sing that in church. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I don't know little sort of research into this. What was the psalmist here meaning? Well, this particular day is said to refer to the time when the Savior would ride into Jerusalem, when the Messiah would make his entry into Jerusalem. That was a day to remember. And so the psalmist said, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It was a day to remember. It was a day that was marked. And it was a day that stood out. But we must also always remember the Lord has made every day. He has made every day. He has made every day and allowed you and I to live in it at the minute for a reason. But when I was thinking about this, and I'm speaking about myself and I am challenging myself, so often I forget that. So often I allow myself just to forget that. We need to value every day. And Moses says in Psalm 90 and verse 12, teach us to number our days that we might gain that heart of wisdom. And it starts with us valuing our days. I think in our lives, in this world, and it's, it's harsh and it's hard, and I don't want to be a prophet of doom and gloom because I believe in victory in Jesus. But we're in a darkened world. And there's a danger, and I feel it, maybe you're the same, but I know I feel it, there's a danger we can just get into survival mode. To say, I've survived, and there's another year I've got through. Or, or there's another week I've got through. We're, we're meeting with people who are struggling at the minute, and honestly, for them to get through a day is a victory. But they're getting through. But the Lord has given us every day. Whether good or bad or in between. And we have to see that. And we have to understand that. He's allowed us to still live. And that in itself has a message for you and I. He's got something for us still to do. If he didn't, he would have called you home. And we're feeling the loss, and we said it last week, but we're saying it again tonight, of brothers and sisters being taken home, and we miss them, and we feel it. But the Lord has still allowed you and I to live. He's got something for you still to do. And we have to understand that. And Moses here has a message to you and I, number your days. 
God, it starts with us valuing them, understanding where they've come from. This is the day the Lord has made. He's made every day. And let's be like the psalmist we said, we will rejoice and be glad in it. It starts with us valuing our days, but it means something else as well. It means this, make them count. Brothers and sisters, let us say this to you, make them count. When you number something, you're counting them. Now, that's what you're doing, you're, you're counting them. And we've got to make our days count. Gotta make them count. Of, they're, 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 gotta make them meaningful. You know, I believe that's what the Apostle Paul had in mind when he spoke to the church at Ephesus. And, and Ephesus was an ancient city in a place, a region called Asia Minor. It was a melting pot of culture. It, it, People from various cultures, races were there. Ephesus had it all, but it was a city of vice as well. It was, it, it was just immoral in so many ways. So many things go on there, and yet the Lord planted a church there. And you know what he said to the pastor and also to the people? Make it count. Make it count. I've planted you there for a reason. And Paul was their mentor. And Paul was their spiritual father, if you like. And he wrote to them. And he says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16, these words, and they're, they're, they're famous words in Christian circles. But he said here to them, redeem the time because the days are evil. And if that ever meant anything to any people, it meant something to the people in Ephesus. And Paul said these words, redeem the time, or redeeming the time, because the days are evil. The English Standard Version of our Bible says this, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. I know what's written all over that. Make it count. Make it count. Make your time count. Make your days count. I think that's powerful. That's such an inspiring statement. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Making the best use of the time because the days are evil. And when we're talking about what Moses laid down in Psalm 90 as numbering our days, We've got to make them count. We've got to say before God. We've got to get in earnest with God these days. This has challenged me so much this week. Lord, make my day count today. Lord, you've given me this day. So there's the value of it. Understanding where it's come from. This is the day the Lord has made. Understanding, you know, even when you wake up in the morning, no matter how you're feeling. And it's hard these mornings, by the way, isn't it? It doesn't get late till about half past twelve in the afternoon these days. And the sun doesn't come up and, and it's freezing and you don't want to go over the door and you, you've got to go out, you've got to get to your work, you've got to do it. But you're reminding yourself that when you're lying in bed and the alarm goes off, this is the day the Lord has made. Lord, you've given me this day and I value it. And it's not just about me getting through. It's not just about me coming back into this bed tonight again and going, shh, I got through and survived another day. No, I want to make it count. I want to make a difference. I'm a child of God. I mightn't be here tomorrow. I mightn't be here this time next week. But you've given me the day. That's what it means to number your days. So inspiring this, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. It's, it's not the same today, by the way. It comes down to this, by the way, in relation to this, making the best use of the time. It comes down to this. I'm trying to do that, just bring it down for us all to see clearly. I think it comes down to this, taking our opportunities every day. Take in your opportunities because God will give you every day certain opportunities. You really will. 
Every single day, whether good or bad or in between, whether sunshine or snow, but every single day gives us tremendous opportunities. If you only think about it, you'll get this. If you only think about this, you'll, you'll be convinced of this. Every day gives you an opportunity. What to do? Number one, to worship. To worship. Now, in this life, in the land of the living, as the Bible puts it, with the breath in your body and in your soul to worship Him. And by the way, we're not just talking about singing here. We're talking about a lifestyle. We're talking about a character. We're talking about commitment. We're talking about living for God. That's worship. I, I talked to someone one time, and he, and, and he said, I can't worship. I don't. I says, well, why don't you do it? He says, because I can't sing. And he says, I don't worship. I, 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 I can never, ever. And I had that experience with this guy that that's only one molecule of worship. Worships your life. Worships your commitment. It worships bringing your mind to the Lord. Worships bringing your body into subjection. Worships giving him your abilities. Worships giving him your time. Worship is serving him. I was thinking about the other morning when it was so icy and black ice everywhere. I can remember in, in Yorkshire coming down one morning in the snow and the snow was heavy and I came down and I got out of the car at the church and opened the church gates and I could hardly move the gates in the snow and I was early when it was dark I was opening the church gates to go in and I remember stopping as I, I could take you to the spot just pulled up the gates and moved the snow and I stopped in that moment and I looked to heaven and I said here I am to worship. I never sung a song the whole morning. But I was saying to him, I'm giving you me right now. And among all this snow and among all that's going on, you can do something. And by the way, see, we're talking about the snow. I remember a time when it was snow, and you know, through Facebook and social media, you say that someone put on, and the rhyme man said, but, but he'd help to move the snow so we can get in tomorrow. And so we all went down on Saturday night with shovels and moved the snow because it was heavy. And, and a guy came down whose wife got saved about four months beforehand. She couldn't come, so she sent him. And he was down shoveling the snow with us. And, and with us for about an hour or so, just doing all of that. And his name was Mark. And I've got a lot of sight of him and all. And, and, and this is great, Mark, and God bless you for doing that. Do you know something? He came back the next morning and got saved. God can do something every day. This is the day the Lord has made. Don't let conditions stop you. What the Bible says, blessed is he or, or she who sows beside all waters and all conditions. Number your days. Every day brings you an opportunity to worship, not just singing songs. Worship is offering God our minds, our bodies, our abilities, our times. That's what today has brought with it for all of us. The opportunity for that, even coming here tonight, is your offering to the Lord. It's the word, by the way. Get in your car. Then you didn't have to come. But you did. And it's on to Him. See, it's an you've taken your opportunity today. I encourage you in that. Another opportunity is not only worship, but witness. Witness. Make it count. You know, Paul said something else in one of his letters in regard to redeeming the time. This is interesting. I'd love you to see this as we come to a conclusion here. But in Colossians 4 and verse 5, Paul said these words. Now, they're interesting words. Listen to them. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside. There's an interesting phrase. Walk in wisdom, he said, towards those who are outside. And here's what he put on the end of that. Redeeming the time. He added that as well. Now we know from the first reading in Ephesus that that means making the best use of the opportunity. He's talking about witnessing here regarding those who are outside Christ. Who are outside the church. This means acting wisely. Conducting ourselves right before those who are without 
the Lord. You know, every day we are a witness to those outside. You really are. Once you take the name of the Lord, whether you know it or not, you say, well, I don't really witness. You do every day because you've taken his name. And they know you've taken his name. And that's why they'll watch you and observe you. We witness to those outside the Lord, whether they be our family members, our friends, colleagues, or strangers. And let's remember something as we say, we witness whether we know it or not, or even if we like it or not, we still witness. You, you always will, you'll always be that witness. Once you take his name, and others know you've taken his name, then you're a witness. Some say, I can't witness. I just, I'm no good at it. But the truth is, we witness something every day about the Lord. We do that every day. You know, every day we represent Him. And I think that's, there's a great meaning in taking the Lord's name in vain. You know, we, we're inclined to think of one dimension of that, of, of blasphemy, and, and it means that, of course, but there's another dimension. When you take his name, you take his name as a Christian. His name is on you, and others see that. You can't take that in vain. You can't take that, you can't live in an empty way once you've taken that. You've got a testimony to think about, and every day there's an opportunity. It starts with us living right doing right there's a witness here as well there's an opportunity to witness it's a good thing to remember every day we represent him and that's why we've got to make those days count by the way brothers and sisters that's why we do gospel celebrations here to witness it's not just about filling in a, a song in the calendar what are we going to do no it's a wonderful opportunity and we do it every month and it's working every month because people are fresh and people are coming and more of people are coming all the time. What an opportunity. And here with a couple of days to go, we can take that opportunity even by ringing people, asking people, bringing people here on Sunday night and let's see what God does. It's an opportunity. Let's make that count, brothers and sisters. We do gospel outreaches every week online. And that's a witness too. If we're wise, we'll realize that and we'll make them count. You see, if you read church history, you'll find something about the women who were used of the Lord in powerful ways and also men who were used to see Him. They understood these things. They understood that they were granted days, limited now, like you and I, but they made the most of them. There's a, there was a great preacher, he was Scottish, and his name was Richard Baxter. And Richard Baxter was a Puritan preacher, teacher, and he wrote a book called The Reformed Pastor. It's a great book. I read it when I started out in the ministry. It's a great little book called The Reformed Pastor by Richard Baxter. So helpful, so honest as well. I really appreciated that book. But I appreciated this more about Richard Baxter. Because when Richard Baxter was in a study, he, and he would then to prepare his sermons, his messages, he had on his desk a little plaque. And he went into his study before the gospel service. He went into his study and he saw this little plaque every time he went into his study. And there was a message on the plaque and here's what it was. Help me to preach tonight as though I will never preach again. As a dying man to dying men. And that reminded that man he had that one opportunity and he had to give it his all. He had to make it count. And God used that man. And listen, this is for us tonight as well. We've got to number our days. We've got to value them. We've got to make them count. But we need to remember this as well as we end. Our days are already numbered. And it's good to keep that in mind. 
our days. We're talking about numbering them. We do that for these reasons we're talking about. But remember this as well. They are already numbered. Now we have heard the saying over the years, haven't we? His days are numbered. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great Roman Irish saying, isn't it? That, that means you had a death wish on you. That means that, that, that you were a marked man and for all sorts of infamous reasons. His, his days are numbered, or her days are numbered. Truth is, all our days are numbered. King David knew that. He was said to God, My times are in your hands. My days are numbered. Our days on earth are limited. Each day we live, is another day taken away from that number. Tomorrow, another day taken away from that number. We don't know how more we have. We've got to remember that our days are already numbered. We've got to value them. We've got to make them count for that reason. We have also heard it said, what if today was your last? What would you do if you knew How would you change things you were doing today? What would really matter? What would you put right if today was your last? What would you amend? But in reality, it could be. So if there's things to do, there's things to change, there's priorities to make, there's people to see. There's words to be said. Do it. Brothers and sisters, do it. Don't put it off. Do it. That's what it means to number our days. You know, a few days before his death, Dr. F. B. Meyer wrote to a very dear friend these words. I've just heard, to my great surprise, that I have but a few days to live. It may be before this letter reaches you that I have entered the palace. Don't trouble to write, I'll meet you in the morning. It's not beautiful, by the way. I, I, I love what he said there. I've entered the palace. I've entered the palace. That's where we're going, brothers and sisters. Don't bother to write back. I'll meet you in the morning. D.L. Moody used to say, someday you will read in the papers that D.L. Moody of East Northfield is dead. Don't believe a word of it, he said. At that moment, I shall be more alive than what I am now. He preached his last sermon, by the way, in the city of Kansas on the 23rd of November, 1899, from the tax in Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, and they all with one consent began to make excuse. And that night afterwards, 50 people went into the inquiry room and gave their lives to Jesus. It's right to the end. It's last day. It's last sermon. You know what he said at the end? I just want to be used a bit. Right to the end. Folks, let's be like that. Yes. What we read says, teach us. This doesn't come instinctively. We need to be taught this. But there are some circumstances that can teach us some situations. And they speak to you. And they say, number these days. Make them count. Can we bow our head just for a second? <coughs> We're going to pray and we're going to worship and we're going to leave here. And we're going to go out into the night again into our lives. And if the Lord wills, tomorrow morning, another day. He's got something for you. If you live it, He's got something for you. Ask Him at the beginning, Lord, what do you want me to do? Father, tonight we are your people. Lord, we're the sheep of your hand, and we're so glad that we're in the, your hand. But 
Lord, we want to give ourselves to you more than we've even done before. There's only one life, and soon it will pass. It's only what's done for Jesus that's going to last. Help us to remind ourselves of that, Father. Help us to live for you more than anything else in this life. Help us to please you. And may we know in ourselves the fulfillment of the purposes that you have for us. Lord, bless your people now. And bless our time here as we just look to you with our hearts again. Amen. Jesus
And will you hide us and protect us? Let us live for Jesus. Help us to shine wherever you place us. Let us be lights in the dark. In this dark world, may we let the light of Jesus shine through us. Lord, give us a great week and give us a brilliant Lord's Day. Bless your people. Bless those who couldn't get out tonight because of illness. Bless those who are struggling at this moment. Lord, lift them up, touch them, heal the sick. Let those that are grieving know your comfort. And Lord, separate us with the joy of the Lord, even as we're leaving the night. Let us go out happy, happy in our hearts, that our lives and our future and our days are in your hands. Thank you for your word, Lord. Now separate us with the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich out of no sorrow because we ask these things in Jesus lovely name and everybody said Amen, Amen. God bless you